Our scripture reading this Sunday is taken from Genesis chapter 1. God created, and God was moving, and God separated, and God called, and God made, and God gathered, and God placed, and God blessed, and God worked. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. All right, so I'm going to begin with a question that's going to take some of y'all way back. All right, so the question is this. Can you remember your first job, the first job that you ever had? Think, think for a moment. Maybe you didn't want that job. Maybe you're excited about the job, but think, think about that first job. And this morning, the reason I asked that question is we're going to look for a little bit uh, at the idea of work and how we should view our work and maybe how God views our work and how that ought to impact how we view our work. So I'll talk to you a little bit about the first job that I had. So I didn't get my first job until I was out of uh, high school. I graduated high school in 2013. Uh, and then the summer after that, I began working at the Chick-fil-A off of Exit 101 in Cordial, Georgia. And this Chick-fil-A was not even a year old yet when I began working there. And so Everyone loved Chick-fil-A because if you've ever been to Cordial, there's not much there. And so getting a Chick-fil-A was like getting Disneyland in Cordial. So it was, a, it was a good thing. But with that, it was always busy. And if you, if you ever travel to the beach, you pass right by exit 101. And so we would get a lot of spring breakers. We would get like, there would be moments where we'd be working and there would be like buses pull into the parking lot. And it was always a grand time working at the Chick-fil-A on Fridays and Saturdays. Uh, and I remember when I first got this job, I was pretty excited about it. Because at the time, you know, my mom needed a little help with paying for some things. And it was about time for me to start paying for my own gas and paying for some of the things that I wanted. And so I was kind of glad to, to get the job. And that's how it started, right? I, you know, when you get your first job, you're excited. But then you start actually having to work. And you start going there all the time. And you're doing things, right? And so I remember working there. And at the beginning, they had me in the front of house, right? So if you know Chick-fil-A, you got your people out front and then you have your people in the kitchen and over time they eventually they sent me to the back of the kitchen so I don't know if what that was about or why they did that but eventually I was in the in the kitchen and that's when like you really had to work you know when you work in the front you know the, the saying was if, if you're leaning you need to be cleaning right if you're hanging out you need to be cleaning and that was really the extent of the work that you did out there other than getting people their food and things like that but working in the kitchen is a whole different story and so it got really tough for me uh, just work-wise when I would start picking up shifts where I would work in the mornings. And so that's what my shift usually uh, or ended up being. So I would work the 5.30 to 2 or the 5.30 to 4 uh, on my days where I didn't have class. And some days when I did have class, I'd get off at 4 and then I'd go to class at like 5 or 6 in the evening at the time. Uh, and I remember there would be mornings where we would have people sitting in the drive through waiting for us to open. And I grew to hate Chick-fil-A. I will say I grew, I did not enjoy it very long. So there would be also these moments where I'd be working the, uh, the breakfast line by myself. And I had uh, a lady behind me, her name was Chiquita, and she did the biscuits. So she made biscuits every morning. And what you did not want to happen, she was my manager for the, the morning shift, I did not want her to have to come help me. Because if she had to come help me, there was going to be a heck to pay, to say the least. And so I didn't want to get her away from making biscuits because then that would put us behind. But there were some mornings where she had to come help me. And you know those cold sweats you get when you're like, no, you need to be doing better at something than what you are? That's how I felt a lot of those mornings. And over time, I grew really, really frustrated working there. Uh, and I'll share one more little moment or story that I had from my time at Chick-fil-A. So one of the ways I would get out of like being at the store is if they would come in the back and they say, hey, does anybody want to be the cow? And I'm, I'd be like, yeah, I'll be the cow, all right? So, but the thing is, if, if you don't notice already, I'm not a very big person. So the, the male cow is fit for normal size humans. 
So I couldn't fit in that. And I'd be like, just give me the girl cow. And actually, I have a picture of me as y'all can't really see it, but I'm the girl cow. What this is, is uh, in Cordial is the cougar walk on Friday nights. And, you know, they love to do their marketing and things like that. And that's me as the, the girl cow. I'd, I was on the sidelines throwing footballs into the stadiums and things like that. Um, but that was my first job. I worked at Chick-fil-A and it had its ups and downs, but I will say I, I grew to not like it that much. Uh, and, and so we all maybe have those jobs or maybe you're in that job where maybe you get eventually tired of going to work. Um, and my mindset about how I approached work probably wasn't the best, right? I would ask the question like, does this matter? Like I'm only getting paid eight bucks an hour. This is not like, I'm sweating like crazy there. Um, there would be moments where I'd be like, man, should I just call in today? Like, I, I got a little headache. I think I, that's enough to call in, right? And so naturally, like, I would reflect this attitude, right? When I would go to work, sometimes I would reflect this already kind of like not super positive attitude. And there are a few different ways that I would do that. And the first one is when you think of that first job, like, you're excited and you're grateful for it. Well, over time, I was not very grateful for it, even though it was a blessing for me at that time in my life. There would be moments where, like, Chiquita would come and get on to me. I'd get aggravated. I'd be real aggravated. And she had to write to, to get on to me because I wouldn't do my job. I'd be aggravated. And the worst one, I think, that, that we can get in any part of life or any work that we're doing is apathy, to, to be apathetic, to just be like, ah, oh, this doesn't matter. This isn't important. This is just working at Chick-fil-A on exit 101 in Little Cordial, Georgia, right? And so that was my first job, and, and that's how I viewed work at times, and, and there have been other moments where I've had other jobs that maybe I didn't enjoy that much, and I had the same kind of attitude. And the question that we should think on is how do I currently view my work? As we're on Labor Day weekend, and we're, I know some of y'all, like, you're tomorrow, you're like, man, I'm glad I don't have to go to work tomorrow, right? We're going to talk a little bit about maybe when you go back, maybe how we can view it. And I think there's two statements of truth in relation to that question that we should think on. And the first one is this, how we view and think about our work directly reflects our trust of God. How we view and think about our work directly reflects our trust of God. We can hate our jobs or dislike our jobs or just not simply work, and it reflects a poor attitude of this possible gift that we've been given. That if we trust God, we say that God places us in the seats that we're in, or God is guiding our steps, would that not be the same in even the job that maybe we don't enjoy, or the, the days in which we don't want to go to our work, or the work that we're doing? That when we view and think about our job in a certain way, it reflects how we trust our God, and where He's leading us, and where He's guiding us. And it's not only like a negative thing, but maybe like you don't rest like with your work, right? Like you work, 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 work. You go, go, go. And maybe like that also reflects your trust of God where you are a control freak and you feel like you've got to be always working. You've always got to be going. And that desire of control can become God's, uh, we can become God's of our own life and our job. And so how we think and, and view our work reflects, it reflects to people our trust of God. We can feel as though, our, like I've mentioned with my job, at Chick-fil-A that our jobs do not matter and our work like in a manner that's lazy and when I think about Jesus that man was not lazy he walked everywhere he was going he had a purpose he had a mission I remember when I was at Chick-fil-A that uh, Mary Beth McNeil was the owner and one time I was just kind of like haphazardly doing things she came up to me and she said Blake how do you think Jesus walked I was like I don't know and she was like with a purpose I was like, you need to be doing stuff with a purpose and so how we work and how we view our work reflects our trust of God. Each attitude here it reflects a trust of our own value of our jobs uh, rather than a value based upon like our, our gratefulness for what has, God has given us. And so I said there's two statements of truth that go with that. The second one is this. How we view and think about our work has a direct impact on how we carry ourselves as we do our work. I think that's one of the most important ones. That as Christians and as followers of Jesus, we're called to be these separated people. That we're called to like live boldly. We're called to be set apart. We're called to reflect Jesus. We're called to live a life that looks differently in how we view and think about our work. Like at the time, you know, I would tell people I'm a Christian, but I would come in and be like apathetic and just kind of like whatever about it. But Jesus 
calls us to be different. Ephesians 6, 7, it says this, work with enthusiasm as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people, which that's hard because sometimes the people that we work with, we don't necessarily enjoy being around them. But what we're called to do is work with this enthusiasm. A calling to be set apart is this calling to be different. Proverbs 15, 13, it says this, a happy heart makes the face cheerful. A happy heart makes the face cheerful, but heartache crushes the spirit. These two statements of truth, they kind of like give us this like, like new way of thinking about things. How we view and think about our work directly reflects how we trust God, and rather we trust that God has placed us in the position that we're in for a reason. And also, if we have that trust of God, we then live that out. We show people grace. We show people love. And we live and work in a manner that's like people should say, man, those Christians work hard because they have a reason behind why they're working, why they're doing what they're doing. There's an author and a pastor named John Mark Comer, and he has a quote about work that is really good. It says this, Our job is to make the invisible God visible, to mirror and mimic what he is like to the world. We can glorify God by doing our work in such a way that we make the invisible God visible by what we do and how we do it. And so our work matters, even if you're the Chick-fil-A cow. Like our work matters. What we're called to do matters. How we live our lives matter as we're doing our work. So the question is this, the how. How are we able to have a differing view on our work? How do we shift our mindset on those days where we are just not feeling it? Ideally, we should ask the question of how does God view my work and maybe how can I change my viewpoint on work? And this morning, I just want to go over five simple thoughts and ideas on how God views our work and look at some scripture. In our worship guide, we have an outline in the back that you can fill in those blanks. But I just want to work through these very quickly as we go into Labor Day and then we go back to work. Maybe we can put these things into practice. And this is for myself as well. And the first one is this. Labor is not punishment. It's God's choice. Labor is not punishment. It's God's choice. It was by and it was through work that we see God in action in Genesis 1. The very first time in the scriptures that we see God doing something, he's working, right? He's working. Our scripture reading this morning was God created, and God was moving, and God separated, and God called, and God made, and God gathered, and God placed, and God blessed, and God worked. And that word worked is a word, it's adova. And we'll get to that in a little bit. And this is how I know that, that God was working. In Genesis 2-2, we see that God rests. By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. So on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. I'll tell you, some of the best naps that I ever had was after I worked the fry machine at Chick-fil-A for several hours, right? When you're working, like we know that God was working because he was resting after he worked. And so labor is not this punishment. It's something that we're given. It's God's choice. It's his design that, that if we are made in the image of God and we've been made like God, we are called to reflect God, and we do that in our work. So the first idea I want you to think about this morning is on those Monday mornings when it feels like you don't want to go to work and it's like punishment, it was God's choice to allow us to work. And the second idea is this. Labor is not accidental. It is God's design. And this is kind of similar in that way. Labor is not accidental. It's in God's design. From the initial moments of God and his dealing with humanity in Eden, we see a design of work. All right? We see work given to humanity. In Genesis 2.15, it says this, The Lord God took the man, and he put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. To work it and to take care of it. This is God's directive and design so that we see in the first point where God is giving, like, giving us creation and he's created us and we reflect that in that work and he worked, he also gives this to Adam. By this in creation, we're given three opportunities in our work and you can kind of write little notes if you want to by these, but the first one is dignity. We're given this opportunity to be proud of our work because of what we believe about Jesus and how we do our work. And we can have a dignifying way that we do our work. Adam was called to take care of the garden and to have dignity in that. The second is we're called to have a responsibility in our work, right? 
You know, he's, he's given him the garden to work and to take care of it. It wasn't just something that was going to happen, but Adam is given that. And the last one is accomplishment. To accomplish great work because God has assigned us to it. That goes back to that idea of like how we view our work will reflect how we trust our God. That if we really believe we're called to be where we are at because God has placed us there, then we'll want to have dignity, we'll want to have responsibility, and we'll want to accomplish great things, not because we're looking at ourselves or pointing at ourselves, but we can say, I do my work and I do the things that I'm called to do because I've been given this seat by God and I'm not doing this for self, but I'm doing this because this is by God's design. And so we've been called to, to do this work. Labor is not punishment. It's God's choice. Labor is not accidental. It is God's design. And the third is this. God does not view my work as insignificant. God does not view my work as insignificant. I serve other people and their needs. I serve other people and their needs. There were a lot of moments where I've worked jobs where I felt like my work was insignificant. The second, jo one of the other jobs I had, uh, the second job actually, in college, I worked at Doug's Deli in Rome, Georgia. I don't know if you've ever been there. They've got great sandwiches, so if you haven't been. But my first, like, little bit working there, I was the dish boy. I worked in the back, and they would bring the, the dishes back, and I would wash the dishes, right? And there were many moments where I was like, this does not feel like I'm very important at all. I'm just the guy in the back washing dishes, and it, my hands would get pruny. I would get, be covered in dishwater, and it was just not a great time a lot of the times. And as I began to, like, kind of think about my work and think about what I was called to do in my life, like, I began to, this was when I began to kind of shift, like, like how I do my work. Because if you're doing a hard job like that, you have to have some kind of particular mindset about it or it's going to be miserable. And this is when I began to kind of think about, like, what has God called me to do even as I am, like, the dish boy? And so God does not view our work as insignificant. We serve other people and their needs. And I was really serving the rest because if you don't got clean dishes, they don't run, right? And so for you, maybe you have a job where you do not feel significant at all. You don't feel important. You are serving other people and their needs. You're doing something that is helping somebody. And if you're not, there are people there in that place that are an opportunity for you to love on, right? Our workplace for many of us is where we spend more time than anywhere else right? Whether you hate it or not. When we view our work as insignificant, we miss the opportunity of what it is. Think about it. We miss, when we see it as insignificant, we miss the opportunity of what it is. An opportunity to reflect what we see in Jesus, someone who lived with purpose, someone who loved the outcast, somebody who was there for those that needed grace and love and mercy. Maybe there's people at your workplace that, like, they don't have a lot of friends or they don't have a lot of people that are there for them. That is that opportunity to love on them. We get to reflect His grace and love to those that we are working alongside. And so when we view our work as insignificant, it becomes this obligation. And what if we did not view our work as an obligation, but as an opportunity, Right? Being able to follow Jesus in all moments of life allows obligation to become opportunities, even in the work that sometimes maybe we don't enjoy, right? 1 Corinthians 3, 9, it says this, we are God's fellow workers. We are God's fellow workers. We're working alongside God in this world, uh, uh, in this world as it was his design, as it's not a punishment, as he worked and as he, as he gave responsibility in the garden to show us work, we have also been called to do the same. And so even if you view your work as insignificant, God does not. There is an opportunity in it to serve other people and their needs. And fourth idea this morning is I must seek to practice a godly work style. 2 Timothy 2.15, it says this, Do your best to win God's approval as a worker who doesn't need to be ashamed and who teaches only the true message. So I mentioned that word earlier, adova. So it says here um, in, in 2 Timothy, it talks about this idea of like, do your best to win God's approval as a worker. And the way that we do that, again, it goes back to this continual attitude that we have. What you see throughout the scriptures is this word adova, right, in the Old Testament. And it's a word for uh, work, but it's also a word for worship. And it's used interchangeably all the time because in the mindset of those uh, that, that were writing the scriptures, the view of work was also this view of worship because they were one and the same. That w the work that is given 
is also an opportunity to worship because viewing God as the one who gives us our work. And so as we are working, we are called to do this adova. We are called to work, and we are called to worship. We do not just come to church and worship, and we do not just worship in Christian settings, but as we are doing all things, we are called to worship. Joshua 24, 15, it says, But as for me and my household, we will adova, we will serve, we will work, and we will do things with the Lord. That verse, it brings us so much purpose because that is what we are called to do. We are called to live out this adova. And so I must seek to practice a godly work style. And that goes back to that dignity. It goes back to that responsibility. It goes back to that accomplishment that as we are doing our work, we are reminded of that word. I hope that maybe this week that you, maybe you'd write that word down. It's A-D-O-V-A-H. And it's this idea that we are working, but we are also worshiping, right? That we are participating in worship as we work. And as we are seeking to live out this godly work style, that is how we do it. We don't view work as just work, but it's a, it's a view and a, a way to do it as worship. And the last kind of idea this morning, point five, is when I do God's work, God's way, I can trust him for his results. A great passage that reflects this is Colossians 3, 23 through 24. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart. As working for the Lord, not for men, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ you are serving. And this, I want to think for a moment on this idea really quickly of, there's two sides of work, and I mentioned that earlier, and a lot of times maybe it's a, a negative side of how we view our work and maybe we don't enjoy it, but then there's also the side where maybe we enjoy our work, but we enjoy our work a little too much, and that we think that it gives us our purpose. And that we, we are like in control of it. And we're putting in hours and we're trying to climb the ladder. And we're trying to do everything that we can to gain, 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 gain. And in that, you are also reflecting how much you trust God. Because if you feel like you have to work and work and work and gain and gain and gain, whose power are you doing that in? Your own. You're doing it for yourself. And so when we do God's work, God's way, we can trust him for the results. And that gives us room for rest. Right? Moments that as we're doing our work that we can find trust and rest. The greatest form of trust is allowing ourselves to rest aside from our work. That our work isn't everything and that our work allows us to rest. That when we do it with all our hearts as we're working for the Lord, not for others, we can trust that God will take care of it. There's a great quote by a, a scholar. He's a Jewish scholar, Abraham Huschel, and he wrote a book called The Sabbath. And he talks about rest. The Sabbath is a reminder of the two worlds, this world and the world to come. The it is an example of both worlds. For the Sabbath, for rest, is joy, holiness, and rest. Joy is part of this world. Holiness and rest are something of the world to come. And so when we have this opportunity to rest from our work, we have an opportunity to participate on earth as it is in heaven and get this rest. And so no matter what place you're at on the spectrum of how you view your work, maybe you don't enjoy it, or maybe you enjoy it to the point of where you are just obsessed with it, there is this calling for us to trust God with our work to a point where we can do it with purpose, but not purpose that get, like, makes us feel like we have to like, gain something, and we can also find rest in our work, trusting that we don't have to be in control. And so as we close this morning, I just have a few questions of like maybe application or you to think on as we move into Labor Day. And as you rest tomorrow, maybe think about these things, right? How do you view your work? This is the ultimate kind of question we're thinking about this morning. How do you view your work? What do you think of it? Just maybe you want to jot that down. I don't know. There are times when, like I mentioned, when I was working, I did not enjoy it. In what ways can you approach your work differently? I think those five ideas we talked about this morning maybe give a framework of that. Like, how can maybe we view our work differently? Do you see your work as uh, avodah, being one and the same as worship of God? Do you see that? Do you see your work as avodah? And I want to leave you with this, this passage. This is a, the great Shema, and it's a calling to hear what God is saying in the scriptures. And as we think about our work in, in this passage, I think that it can guide us. 
that no matter where we're at in our work, that it can guide us in what we're called to be as followers of Jesus and worshipers of God. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. And if you can apply that and hear that to your work, you can't go wrong. If you can apply those words, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength to your work, you cannot go wrong. And so this morning, how do you view your work? What do you think of it? How will you do your work? Right, where, whatever you're doing, wherever you're at. So let's pray this morning as we think on that. Dear God, thank you for your love and your mercy. I just pray that we would uh, view our work as something that you've given us, as a gift to uh, steward and a gift to live out your purpose and the mission that you've given us as followers of Jesus, to show your love and your grace to the world. I pray that we would uh, truly trust uh, where you're guiding us, God. And even in those moments where maybe our jobs are not enjoyable, but uh, that we would, we would lean into that. Thank you for this morning. Thank you for an opportunity to gather together to worship and to hear from what you have to teach us. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. At this time, the, the altars will be open as we move into a moment of uh, worship.